I got Calvin for him. I'm get with you. You, you said. Coach, what up? What's up, man? How are you, man? Thank you for joining us. I'm trying to get the sound right. I see the picture. I hear you fine so far. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Now you can hear me. We good. Nah, man. How are you, man? Thank you for joining us. Man, you my guy. You know I'm going to answer the call when you call, man. Every time you see me, I always give you my time. You know that. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Obviously, you guys, what, two weeks out now? Three. Three. Okay. Um, what was the decision-making in fighting Hector Lewis Garcia, specifically him? Um, well, you see what Terrence Crawford went through when he picked his opponent for um, his fight. We were scheduled to fight this, this period of time. Anyway, with the, you know, a lot of things go on, and I'm daily life and whatnot. And then we wanted to come home to Baltimore because you remember we went everywhere. We went to uh, Atlanta, Vegas. We went to everywhere, but we haven't been back home because they was remodeling the, the, uh, the arena that we did the last show at. So we couldn't go there. So DC was, 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 was open and it was a good look for us because we could get the old, old 95 to come and to DC and whatnot. And when he was an amateur, that's what we used to do everything through was DC. You couldn't really go to no tournament unless you went through DC. Mm. So, so coach, what made you decide on Hector Lewis Garcia? He's an undefeated fighter. Fighter. He just beat it. Uh, he just son son. What's his name from New York? Good fighter. You ever saying that? Chris Colbert. That was, yeah. He he son son him. You know he treated him like yo. You picked the wrong fight. And it was a good fight. He's strong. He's at a bigger weight class, but you know, as a coach, we know that they walk around at a certain weight. You know what I'm saying? He looked at bigger than Chris Carver. You know what I'm saying? And um, he's a good fighter. He's undefeated. He's a champion. You know, he's winning. You know. Absolutely. So I figured it would have been better for Tank to fight him at 130 because that would have made him a five times champion. By fighting him in that 35, he's defending his WBA regular, but he can't become a five times champ by winning that 130 twice. Was it just a thing that y'all didn't think about that accolade, or is going backwards to 132 difficult? No, it wasn't that. It's just based on time. You know what I'm saying? It's based on time. The tank been out the ring for a while since the last fight. You with me? And he's been spending time with his family. Um, a lot of stuff going on in his life. That's why you hear me say he's mad, you know, um, about a lot of things that's going on in his life. And uh, he's at that age now, you know, as a young man, as going into manhood, going into your waking, you start thinking about a lot of things. What's your next decision? What's your next choice? And whatnot. So right now he said, say, let's go at this week. We were scheduled to fight in December. Um, no, nah, let's push this back. Let's do a such and such and such. Um, a lot of things that was going on that uh, behind the scene for us boxing, for us the business side, and they had to get straight first before the fight is even made. And we think it's good. Um, we think it's a great, great, great time. The time is now, you know, to do what we do. Uh, so, coach, I, I gotta, you know, I, you know, you know, they call me messy, but I just like finding out the truth. Bill Haney was on the show about two days ago, uh, flat out insinuating that you are not being paid or you are not being paid properly by Tank. Is he just trying to stir the pot to get the fight between Devin and Tank? Or is there something there? Because we've seen George Cambosos split with his trainer, not pay his trainer, go into the second fight with a new trainer. Let's look at this. How long have I been with Tank? All my life, as long as I know all his life. It's not about the money with me. Tank takes good care of me. He gives me what I ask for when I ask for. He know I'm not into the money. You give me the money, I'm going to spend it all on my kids. That's just simple. That's just like me. Because I understand I had money from the streets. You know what I'm saying? You can't take it to the grave with you. Tax man going to come get it. You know what I'm saying? So what I do is I ask for what I want. At the end of the day, when I ask Tank to take care of my kids, do what I need him to do, it's done. It's not about my life. It's about him. In the words of Floyd Mayweather, it's about the fighters. They don't want getting hit up beside the head. If something happens to Tank the day of the month, who going to take care of him? Bill, that's all he do is do all the talking. He reminds me of Floyd when 
Haney can't even say nothing. You know what I'm saying? To stand up to be his own stuff. And then to a point, it's going to come to that point that he got to see it because we see it with the father and dad situations. You with me? Yeah. I'm so, you know, him, him, him saying that, you know, he worrying about my pockets. As street dudes, we don't worry about what's in somebody else's pocket. We don't worry about what's in somebody else's cup. You know what I'm saying? We worry about what we do. And that's what we've been doing. And that's why we're successful at doing what we're doing. Do you think that fight is a fight that has to happen between Tank and Haney? I don't say it has to happen, but it's going to happen. You get what I'm saying? Because if you look at all the great certain fights happen, certain fights, it's, we can't name on a hand that a lot of fights that we want to see back in the days that didn't happen. I, I always wanted to see Earn Pride and Sugar Ray Nutter happen. Don't know what happened. That fight didn't happen. You with me? Mm -hmm. um, but if, if the fans... And the money is right. At the end of the day, that fight going to happen. Um, that's just like we look at the uh, Spencer and um, Terrence Crawford. We thought it was going to happen this year. That fight going to happen if the money is right. That's like how long Floyd and uh, Pacquiao fight took. You know, things take time. Um, you got different two sides of the fence, um, different um, networks. You know, they got to get all that straight and who's going to show the fight. Then you got to worry about that overseas money. You know, so all that's a lot of factors into a lot of things that people keep forgetting. Before a fight is made, the business side has got to be done first. Do you think it would be in the best interest of Haney to beat Loma and then try to pursue the tank fight because he would be a free agent if and when um, he beats Loma? Um, um, see, see how you said that? They, they, they hollering for a tank, but they got problems that they got to deal with in front of them. You get what I'm saying? And they knew that. I heard Devin tells me that the last time we was together. Good guy, Devin, good guy. But last time we was together, he said he got to deal with this situation first. You know what I'm saying? And I understand Bill. Bill trying to get the best butt for his bang. That's business. Uh, I need you to give us your thoughts and whatever you may know on that sparring session. Obviously, Bill's been out here claiming that the sparring session went a certain way and that he made a whole bunch of money. That there was bets on the line and he walked away with the money. Let me say that. Anybody can say anything. Brona was there. I wasn't there. I could tell you about the first one. But anyway, like I said, Brona came on and said what he said. When that fight is about to be made, that tape won't come out. Mm. <laughs> Why? Somebody going to get paid off that tape. Mm. As it's up with that. And we all know it's a tape out there. <laughs> so uh, how, I guess... How positive do you feel about the Tank Ryan fight happening? I don't even talk about that fight. I got to make it past this first fight to tell you the truth. I know Al did his thing right now. Um, in history, I always go off. I'm an old school coach. I always go off uh, what happened in the past when you see major fights before the fight. You know what I'm saying? I know Hector is coming here to bring ha havoc. So I got to worry about that first and foremost before I can even think about God's here. For and sure. then I got to put on my... I got to put on my scary fight. I got to worry about him fight, you know? So, Co Coach, Kenny, Coach Kenny Ellis called uh, Hector Luis Garcia Ryan's grandfather on the Rise <laughs> podcast. Is that simply because of the, you know, the, the ball crowning? Or do you yeah, guys think yeah, he yeah. is old or looks old? No, nah, he looks old, but the looks is deceiving, man. Kenny always says something, you know. If you look at him, he called um the guy over in England, uh Welch's call him Welch's great. You, you know, so Kenny always says some stuff. And uh he do look like an old man, but he come to rumble though. So I gotta ask before I let you go, obviously Terrence Crawford put on a show in Nebraska, but you know, I don't know if you know, but Tank did an interview on Twitter. Some people want to believe that he was joking, but after Crawford fought, I mean, I, I, after Crawford fought, he uh, he came out and said, you know, um, that he would still be able to knock out Crawford. He said, look at that dude. That was a spawn partner. That's not me. What's your thoughts? Do you think Tank could actually fight at welterweight, and can he specifically compete and beat Thurman and or Terrence Bud Crawford? Um, this is how I look at things. Weight class of four reasons. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Tank is my guy. I raised him since a baby. 
If the opportunity and the money is right, Superman, I call it a Godzilla fight. Get what I'm saying? Whatever happens that night when we get in the ring is going to happen. Win, lose, or draw. I always tell Tank, I said, they say, yo, we're going to go for what we go because we came from the money. You with me? Um, Tank will say things out of his mouth to get um, people robbed up, which he do. That's just like when I was listening to some podcasts. Tank never said that, said he was going to fight um, Thurman. You know what I'm saying? When me and Kenny was watching the fight, we was, you know, I'm a good friend of BK Black Prime. You know what I'm saying? And I was watching. I was happy because Terrence making the money, Prime, new people on the scene. You know, they did a fantastic show and see everything fold out. You know, they're doing it. You know, it's boxing is changing. And, and, and I looked at him. I said, man, that's like a sparring, a sparring match to me. Terrence going to clip him because he was right there to get clipped. And that's what happened. So, you know, and anybody that really watched the fight, any trainers that watched the fight, coaches that watched the fight, it, it looked like a spine match. He was nice and calm. He was nice and cool. But the question is, where do Terrence go next? Well, the question is, can Tank deal with Terrence, in your opinion? No, that's not, that's not, that's not the, that, that fight is not on the table right now. You know what I'm saying? It's only that I'm worrying about the fights that's in Tank Era right now, that's in his weight class right now. Okay. How important are the belts for you for Tank to no, get them? They're not important to me, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, um, certain people was in certain situations, certain certain situations that have a, a better chance to get to them. You know what I'm saying? Bob trying to get them to um, Roman there. You with me? He trying. And I'm hoping Devin don't let that happen. You with me? Um, which I know it ain't gonna happen. I'm gonna roll with Devin, you know, on that fight if they get the fight, you know, if the fight happens, you know how the business side is and whatnot. But that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get you that belt to get it to Roman. You know what I'm saying? Um to Roman or to Lomo? I mean, um, to Lomo, my man. Same person. I call him Romo. <laughs> Roman Chico. Um, so go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, so that's what that's what that's what's on the table for um Devin to get you the bigger fights and whatnot. You know, as Tank said out of his mouth, you know, there's only a few guys that I know that I actually heard Tank said something about was Terrence Crawford. I mean, um was um was um Tevin Farmer and um Devin, you know. But I know now he's telling all of them, stay away from him. Get what I'm saying? Don't come near. Don't come to his fights. Don't do none of that. You know, one minute you smile in his face, next minute you're in there. And we understand his business, but come on, keep it real, man. We don't call nobody out. We don't mess with nobody. So guess what? When you want to fight and that contract is real, we fight. So if if the belts don't matter, what what's the goal for you and Tink? Money. At the end of the day, who's going to put on the biggest fight at the end of the day, we got to worry about this fight right here. Next day, next fight, when we get past this fight, it's the next fight. It's fight after fight. It's never enough. He always said there's never enough. So we're going to do as much as we can and we're going to do it like Floyd did it. Would you, you say that about? the Would you say that the uh, Leo Santa Cruz was a bigger fight for you guys than the Roley fight or was the Roley fight a bigger fight? The Roley fight was a bigger fight according to the numbers. Hmm. Okay. According to the numbers, Roly did his job. Tank did his job. New York came out. You know what I'm saying? And then we ready to see what's happening in the DC. You know, uh, Tank is in a in a position where he can help people, and that's his whole goal. If you listen to his interviews, he want to help people. You know, he tell me all the time, if I'm in position to help somebody, I'm gonna help him. Absolutely. Uh, he was speaking about that with Brian Custer. What does he mean by that? Because he says he wants to fight two more years so that he could be in a better position to help people. Does he mean he's going to take a, a a bigger role in the Javante Tank Davis promotions? Would he become an advisor? Like, what do you think he means by that? He's going to help people. With any situation that he can help him in, he's in a good situation, he's going to help him. This could be promotional. It could be advising. It could be anything. You know what I'm saying? He don't want to control nobody because... <laughs> We, uh, man, I wish I would have recorded and posted. You know what I'm saying? But one day he had all of us sitting down talking. You know what I'm saying? Because he said, they said, this game is screwed. Somebody can wake up the next day bad with you. Being a bad, being a bad move, your career on, on hold. And we've seen that happen. You know, so right now he just want to take care of the young fighters coming out the DMV, 
that got potentials and, and, and help the ones that help him. All right. I got uh, Brandon in Houston. It says, I asked this to our last Baltimore guest, and he refused. Can you say I watch Blue's Clues on YouTube drinking a Mountain Dew? Oh, man, they trying to play that, that Baltimore accent, coach. <laughs> no, I can't say it. I refuse. <laughs> That's a good one. Blues, I can't say it. <laughs> I'm going to get Kenny with that one. I'm going to get Kenny with that one. <laughs> that was Kenny, come here, yo. Come here, Kenny. Come here, yo. Kenny, my child. My man, man. Come here, come here, Kenny. What's up? What up, Coach? Ask Kenny this question. Go ahead and ask this question. All right. Uh, Coach, can you say I watched Blue's Clues on YouTube drinking a Mountain Dew? I watched Blue's Clues on YouTube drinking a Mountain Dew. (laughs) <laughs> he said it. He did say it. He did say it. He's trying to get my accent. If I had said it, I'd have bumped it up. <laughs> nah, that was good. That was good. Uh, let me see. I got two more here coming up. Uh, Ruin of 504 says, will Tank make a move to 140 permanently? We don't know it, you know. As 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 you see, spiders all making moves. Look at the Chalmers. Everybody, you know, it's, it's it's based on age, timing, and, and uh, that window, basically. David Maldonado, New York City, says, "What's up, Coach? Which How one? Doing? Gi- which one gives Tank his toughest fight? Tio, Loma, Haney, or Shakur?" And how did you score the Tiafimo versus Sandor fight from Saturday? I only gave Sandor the fake knockdown round in round eight. He's sad. He only gave him two rounds. Um, I look at the fight that um, I, as a trainer, I look at he was all flu a while, first fight in a while, ring rust. You know what I'm saying? The uh, fight was I wouldn't say awkward. He was just. He just looked at difficult for him. You know, he still he stayed in the fight. He threw a lot of punches and whatnot. Couldn't catch him. Just, um, we just got to see his next fight. You know what I'm saying? You know, when you get that long layoff, it's different when you get in the ring at a big fight his first time back in a while. You know what I'm saying? Off an injury, you know, almost losing his life. So I give him the benefit of the doubt of the fight. He got the job done. He gave him the decision to keep on moving. From Nebraska, Canna says, give your stance on belts not mattering more than the money. Do you care about Tank going to the Hall of Fame? No, I care about the Hall of Fame. But at the end of the day, I worry about his safety first and foremost. Because in this sport now, a lot of jokers getting hurt. You know what I'm saying? And them fights that we named just now, they are big fights. You know what I'm saying? They are big fights. Is this how they're going to come out them fights, going into them fights at the end of the day? For sure. Coach, I won't hold you, man. Thank you for jumping on. We appreciate you. Hope camp is going well and can't wait to see you out in Baltimore. I can't wait to, man. Nice talking to you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Appreciate it. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Coach Calvin Ford. Family, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help us get to that million subscribers. We're on the road to a million. And Obviously, we have other great content on our Patreon channel. So since this video is over, head on over to our Patreon and check out all the exclusive content or right here on our YouTube members.